Today, I'm honored to be joined by a host on SportsCenter for ESPN at the 6 o'clock hour and the host of ESPN's College Football on ABC, Kevin Nagandi. How are you doing this morning? Good to see you, Manav. I'm doing great. I noticed, though, you've got Cowboys in the back there, so and you're an Astros guy, so you're talking to a Phillies fan and an Eagles yeah. fan, so it's been a good run for you. Can't wait to see what Christmas Eve is going to be like with uh, the Cowboys and Eagles. Yeah, for sure. Glad you mentioned that. And, you know, that game's going to be pretty special. But, um, you know, with the Jalen Hurts injury, it's kind of up in the air now. Um, I think um, the game's kind of lost a little bit of its, um, you know, charm. And we'd love to see Jalen Hurts obviously play in that game. But, um, you know, the Eagles still have the best record in football, a 13-1 record. Um, and they just need one more win, basically, to wrap it up. And, you know, what is what are your thoughts on this latest twist? And how strong is... Um, that Philadelphia Eagles team as a whole? Well, I think they're extremely talented on both sides. They, they are the uh, epitome of a team. Uh, there's a ton of balance. They can beat you through the air. They can beat you on the ground. Of course, it all starts with number one in Jalen Hurts, who's pretty tough. Uh, that Cowboys loss to the Jaguars actually set up uh, this, this potential opportunity for the Eagles where they could, you know, rest Hurts. We don't know the extent of a separated shoulder because it comes in variety of degrees uh, and clearly the Eagles won't reveal to what degree it is but you know when your final two games are against the Saints and the Giants and they're both at home it, and all you have to do is win one more time in the final three weeks to get that one seed I, I would think that they would err on the side of caution um, but nothing would surprise me if Hurts wants to play I'm sure he does want to play on uh, Saturday night against the Cowboys but to me, you're right. It's lost a little bit of its luster. But regardless, it's Eagles-Cowboys, right? No matter mm -hmm. what, if you if you grew up on the rivalry as I have, you just know that uh, no matter what the season is like, uh, a successful one, if you're in Philadelphia, is two wins against the Cowboys. And uh, that's what the Eagles are going for. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I don't think it's going to be necessarily easy for Philly once they reach uh, the playoffs. You have teams like the 49ers in there. Um, I mean, who do you think is going to be the biggest threat uh, to them, I guess, reaching the Super Bowl? Well, I think whoever gets the one seed uh, is in a great position, yeah. specifically when the Eagles, if they're at home and a team like San Francisco with Brock Purdy, they got to come into the environment in Philadelphia. I think that that benefits Philly. Same thing with the Cowboys in that environment. You know, the NFC, we started the season talking about, of course, Tom Brady and talking about specifically Aaron Rodgers and where the Rams were as the defending champs. So th there is a drop off after you get through, you know, Philadelphia and then San Francisco. And then you have, you know, the Cowboys who are potentially going to get the wild card. Yeah. So to me, it's really hard to, to kind of grasp this. It, you know, I, I'd be curious to see what this Tampa Bay team looks like if they win the South. They host that first round regardless, and let's just say the Cowboys go there. How does the, you know? How does Tom Brady respond in the playoffs? Does this team have a switch, considering what we've seen the last two years? But to me, the biggest threat is is the San Francisco 49ers defense and the playmakers that the Niners have in Christian McCaffrey and you know Kittle and Debo and his health. So I, I think a lot of that plays uh, into this. Uh, that's why the one seed is so critical for the Eagles. Yeah, definitely agree with that. And, you know, between the Cowboys fans and Eagles fans, they just keep, you know, debating who's better between Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott. And, you know, that's obviously going to be a debate to see for many years to come. And would love to see those two, you know, go head to head a lot more often. Unfortunately, just injuries have come in the way. So, um, you know, I'd love to uh, hear you describe your journey into the sports media business. And, you know, I'm just wondering, what do you think was the key for you in making it so far? Because people, you know, dream of making it to ESPN and, you know, you're doing that. So how do you describe that? Wow, it's a really good question. Um, I don't think there's one formula. I, I mentioned this uh, to, to many high school uh, classes and college classes. Uh, if you talk to anybody at ESPN, we all have a different journey. There's no, hey, you've got to do this to get to this to get to that. Uh, it's a combination of hard work. It's a combination of being, of course, talented. Combination of being lucky at the right place at the right time because you're prepared for the opportunity. And, you know, building relationships. So a lot of that plays, you know, my journey is completely different from L. Duncan, my co-host on the 6 p.m. Sports Center. My journey is completely different from Reese Davis, who hosts Game Day. Those, uh, you know, 
we all have different backgrounds, the same dreams, uh, and also the same motivation. So I was, I was very blessed to just put my head down and work. I said yes to literally everything. And I wanted to continue to get better and challenge myself. I mean, 16 years at ESPN, I'm still trying ways to challenge myself. I'm never really comfortable with where I'm at. So my advice to anybody would be, um, you know, work hard, build relationships, and and also enjoy the journey and the process, but always be ready for an opportunity. You know, like, I got my first chance on SportsCenter. I was at ESPN for 18 months doing a variety of different shows on ESPN News and College Football Live and Outside the Lines and Baseball Tonight and NFL Live. I was doing a variety of shows, but my first chance to get on SportsCenter back then was a sick call. Uh, huh. And they called me in. I said, absolutely. And, you know, I did the show once. And then within a couple of days, I was doing multiple shows. And then you just build off of that. But I was ready for the opportunity. And that, that's what I would tell people that, you know, try to say yes to things that make you uncomfortable so you can learn how to do it and then get better. And then when your name is called, you're ready for that opportunity. Yeah, definitely agree. You have to, um, you know, keep your mind open to all opportunities that are out there. And I think you make some really great points. And, you know, you're the first Indian American to um, be on a major sports network. So that's pretty inspiring for me, um, you know, because I come from the same background. So I think your journey is really, really awesome. And obviously you want to hit on um, the Phillies versus the Astros World Series. That was pretty incredible. Um, the Astros uh, won their second World Series in six years and beat um, the Phillies in um, six games. And, you know, that series was really impressive. The Phillies ended up giving the Astros their only two losses um, in the postseason. And I um, just want to hear your thoughts on it and how it went down from a Philadelphia perspective. Well, first off, for Philadelphia, it was a phenomenal run. I was at that game three experience where they hit five home runs in the uh, first five innings. And then since then, you know, after that, the Astros woke up with a no hitter the following day in game four. For for me as a Philly fan and where this team was all season and kind of like trying to figure things out and dealing with injuries, as every team does, to have this unexpected run just showed you the type of teamwork teamwork that was in that clubhouse and how how close they were. And everything, you know, fell right into place at the right time, right? You know, Harper got got hot. Uh, their bullpen played really, really well. And listen, the Astros were much more talented. They had more depth, especially in their pitching staff. That played a huge role here in dictating things. And also their lineup, you know, Castellanos wasn't healthy. Um, and we couldn't get timely hits in the final three games of that series where the Astros could. And that experience that they had in the playoffs really paid off. So uh, I, I think the the better team won, and I'm okay with that. But I also know that this Phillies team got a taste of it, and they're going to be so much better this year. Uh, Harper's injury is going to play a role because he won't be back probably till the All-Star break as, he, as he's coming off the elbow injury. But Trey Turner was exactly what this offense needed, especially in the top of that lineup where they need to get somebody on base. Uh, so I, I'm excited as we see in the National League East, you know, the Braves have such a talented core of young players that they're going to build around and grow together. A team that won two years ago. And then you got the Mets who are just spending rid a ridiculous amount of money because the owner wants to wants to win. And, and the Carlos Correa move today and what that left side of the infield looks like is pretty wild with Lindor and uh, Correa. So I think it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait for baseball season. It's been a while since uh, I think the city felt that way in Philadelphia, uh, but I'm pretty excited. I'm also excited, you know, where the Eagles are going to go, when the Sixers yeah. are going to go leading in the spring training, uh, you know, with the Phillies. Yeah, you know, I think it's definitely a great time um, for, for Philadelphia in terms of sports. And, you know, Philadelphia obviously made that move to sign trade. Turner, the Astros have been making moves as well. They got Jose Abreu. So, you know, I have a lot of respect for that Phillies team. They're pretty impressive. I, um, uh, before the postseason, I had a chance to interview Reese Hoskins. He's a um, really, really great guy. Um, so definitely have a lot of respect for what the Phillies are doing there. And you, know, you mentioned the Philadelphia 76ers, and, you know, they're 17 and 12, fifth in the Eastern Conference at this point. And they haven't lost since they lost to the Houston Rockets um, back in, uh, <laughs> here in Houston. And, um, you know, the James Harden experience here in Houston was, I'll just put it like a roller coaster, it was pretty um, incredible what 
you know, the highs were and then the lows. Um, but how do you describe, I guess, that experience um, in Philadelphia so far? Because, you know, his numbers have been better than last year. And um, what are your thoughts on him? Uh, you know, I'm, I will judge James Harden uh, when the playoffs come around. I think, uh, you know, Rockets fans can agree with that. You know, he could put up big numbers in, in the regular season. I also think that the, the second best player on this team is Tyrese Maxey. And Joel Embiid, of course, is the best player. Tyrese Maxey gives them an energy and a juice that will allow James Harden to not feel like he has to carry the burden of the offense. So when you get Tyrese back, which is critical for this team and this offense and the energy uh, on, on the sidelines, as well as, you know, on both ends of the floor, it, it plays a huge role of taking off that pressure that we saw with Harden, specifically with Houston, where, you know, he's dribbling the ball for the first, you know, 18, 19 seconds of a shot clock and then, you know, launching a three with a step back. I think what you're going to see more is balance. And Harden, I think, needs it. Harden understands it. I think Harden wants it. There's a reason why he went to the Nets because he wanted to have help and uh, play his game. And now he's he's got his own version here where he's got two stars next to him. So I'll judge I'll judge James Harden in the playoffs when uh, when we need him the most. And that's kind of how I view the Sixers team. You know, we we've been there before. We've had regular season success. It doesn't matter. Let's get in the postseason. Let's see where we're at and let's make a run. Yeah, for sure. Definitely agree. And that's something that Rockets fans would. Um, you know, definitely agree with as well. Um, seen seen this story before, and we need um, we would have really wanted James Harden to you know, step it up in the playoffs, and we'll see for Philadelphia because I think some Houston fans want Harden to get his first ring. So we'll see what happens. Um, um, you know, with the Sixers, and you know, Kevin really appreciate the time today. I know you have to um, you know, uh, move, but um, really appreciate it. Had a great conversation. Uh, um, I thank you so much for fitting me in, and uh, you know, I'll tag you in this interview once I post it. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you can, uh, you know, follow me along along my story as I, you know, as I head into the sports media business. Mana, it's been a pleasure. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, best of luck to you, and uh, keep making everybody proud. All right, thank you so much, Kevin. Really appreciate it. Thank you.